uploaded on their website, at least anyway. Okay, so I'm going to talk about uh, permaculture. And I uh, just thought I'd just go through some basic things, what permaculture means, and show some examples of the principles, etc., and uh, just talk. But, you know, if you want to ask questions or stop me, just say so. I mean, I don't want to talk at you for like, you know, 20 minutes and half an hour. More of that, you know, see what you want to know. If you know nothing and you want to start again, look at things. Look, I'm comfortable with whatever you want to know about. Just to let you know, I have some things over here that you can take away. Um, I did a talk this morning about grey water and rainwater and that kind of stuff. And there's some brochures here about all grey water systems, rainwater tanks. We operate in uh, Mundaring, so we're nearby. We make garden beds, rainwater tanks, etc. So there's some information here. We've got websites you can kind of get information from. And a bit about uh, permaculture. Some of the other brochures have gone. There's a few things here about courses. Some people run courses and stuff like that. If you're interested about that. And if you live in the Shire of Mundari, um, there's a sustainability survey that some of my students are involved in to look at community gardens in the Shire. So uh, we'd like some people's input. If you've got five minutes to just sort of pick some boxes and put things in, more anonymous, of course. All right, so let's just get started about uh, permaculture and what it all means. Um, about 30 years ago, um, the idea of permanent permanent agriculture was born, and the whole idea of looking at um, perennial agricultural systems, trying to uh, not only grow veggies and stuff, but have long-term sustainability in terms of fruit and nut trees, all that kind of stuff, you know, looking at the soil, looking at water harvesting. So I'm going to touch on some of those things today. And um, soon after that was uh, mooted as permanent agriculture, it became very apparent there was more to do about permanent culture and looking at all aspects of human settlement. So the way we live and the houses we build and what we do with our energy and water and waste, all that is what permaculture is all about. So what we do use organic growing methods and some people think permaculture means organic. That's not true. Organic is just a technique we use to grow our things, but permaculture is more holistic. Okay, and we'll look at those ideas. There are some basic uh, ethics of permaculture about caring for people, caring for the earth, um, you know, looking at surplus, giving things away, helping other people, treading lightly on the planet, building soil. So it's all about those things as part of permaculture. So when we talk about it, people straight away think about you know recycling and minimising the energy consumption, conservation, water harvesting. Uh, and still, in, in most people's eyes about permanent uh, permaculture, it's still about growing food. Um, and that seems to be the emphasis. Uh, in a lot of schools where this is occurring, the, um, even the education department is promoting waste-wise schools. And part of that philosophy is, in fact, that promotes the idea of permaculture gardens in schools, which is great. Uh, but in most people, probably teachers, students, parents' mind, they think that permaculture is about, you know, using straw and tyres and growing food. But that's only one small aspect of the whole concept. And we'll look at those things. So you can see there's other things involved in permaculture. A lot of questions about, well, what's so different about this and biodynamics or between, you know, conventional farming methods or even organic methods you hear about. And the idea about uh, permaculture, as you can see from here, and I do apologise for the size of the screen, it's unfortunate that's what they've provided. But the whole idea is we're looking at the biodiversity aspects of trying to be uh, not relying on one kind of crop, not relying on one kind of animal, but having uh, a mixture of things. So you can always go out in the garden and you pick something to eat. Um, you know, there are many people who just grow apples and have all the one type of apple. Uh, but you know, at my place we have about five varieties and we have apples, the early varieties, so that they have their apples, you know, November, December and then uh, come, you know, January, February we get another lot of apples. So we end up having apples for about six months of the year and they start with, you know, you know with a few uh, red apples, green apples, Anna and Dorset apples. And then you, know, you go to Jonathan's, Granny Smith's and you end up about, you know, Easter time with the old pink lady. So the whole idea is that you can go out and grab something to eat all the time. You're not relying on one type of crop to sustain you. You can always have that diversity. 
But even though it's got all these key ideas about being productive and, and trying to be self-sustaining and building the compost and feeding the soil and that kind of stuff, it really is the most important thing is the last point is the design, is the careful placement of things where things go in the, in the design on the property, in the backyard, front yard, or on a small acre or even a farm. It's where things go, the whole idea of uh, placement of into different areas is crucial. And we'll see a few examples of that too. So just one slide of each key component, if you like, animals. There's tons of animals here today. <laughs> all the kids are probably enjoying all the alpacas, pattern and so forth, and there's lots of uh, ducks and geese and even the uh, turkeys over there. Um, but the whole idea with permaculture is it's just not about gardens. Because uh, the whole idea of uh, food culture is to do about ecosystems. And it's about being mirroring nature in that spec respect of having a productive ecosystem um, that's self-sustaining. And in every ecosystem in the world, um, animals have a crucial role to play. So we use animals as best we can to provide manure or for fire control or digging up and getting rid of pests or whatever it might be. And so wherever possible animals are crucial to, to the design. And animals could be in a small place, just something like something as similar as earthworm farming. So the, the philosophy should be nothing organic leaves the property. You know, if you've got you know, you go past the street verge and you see piles of, you know, people's prunings ready for the shine to pick out. We don't do that. You know, everything should be composted, recycled, used on the property, uh, food scraps to chalks or to earthworms or whatever. So you are becoming a little self-reliant. Alright? Yeah. So, you know, you might have beehives, but we need bees, I need bees to pollinate my apples. And while I haven't got hives myself and I have in the past, the whole idea is that rely on things like them to pollinate our trees. Been a huge push, hasn't there been about solar panels? Who's got solar panels on the roof here? Only a few of you. Well, it's uh, still very popular, um, even though they're thinking to change their rebates, but um, obviously the whole idea is that we can't keep going the way we're going with depleting oil and so forth. And renewable energy, you, you wonder, I always wonder why WA doesn't have many more wind farms and solar systems. I mean, we've got enough sunshine here to drive the whole state, and yet. I'm not sure why we're dragging our feet behind the world. In other countries, in Europe especially, 65%, I think Germany has renewable energy sources for their uh, domestic supply. And they are living in a country that's cold and wet and cloudy. So we need to think about using the sun a lot more. We've got good wind, good sun. We've got the windiest cities in the world here. Why are we doing it? And even biogas. I only know one biogas generator in WA. That's taking pigweed waste, fermenting it, and making the methane to dry the farm. Should be doing that everywhere. Uh, they do it in third world countries. Appropriate technology um, probably doesn't mean computers, I suppose, and the internet. Uh, but the whole idea is that we can simply uh, use devices to, to cook, you know, pizza or ovens you know, solar ovens, fruit drying things, quite easily be built, composting toilets. You know, we don't have to go the way of having things to be always relying on power. We can build things, access things, cost you nothing. Hay box, cookers in the middle there, easy enough to keep food nice and warm. Building. Um, I'm sure you're well aware of the cost of houses and the fact that we have to transport and use lots of energy to make you know, glass and aluminium and all the rest of it. And we still need to have those kind of products. But it makes sense too that we've got soil on your property and you can use it as a round earth house, or you can make mud bricks, or you can use straw. You can build houses quite cheaply and, and easily and have a, a lower impact and a low carbon footprint. I think you need to take those responsible actions. So, you can make houses out of mud brick and you can make them out of rammed earth and straw bales and just aerated concrete panels. These are all technologies that are here, they're all approved, it's easy to do, it's not hard, it's a bit different, yeah. But if you build them as a passive soil design building and everything's okay, uh, you're, you're far better off. So you can see that 
uh, lots of light coming in because the interesting thing about this is that you want to face the house towards the sun. It's not important to face the house towards the road, okay? You have to face the long axis towards the sun and if you simply do that, you won't need to have any air conditioners or heaters. Easy, people do it. Just got to move the house towards the sun, orientate the house a certain way. Twice the length of the width, minimal windows on the east and west. There are passive solar design principles that are very basic that some people are implementing in WA, but it's not hard to see winter light coming into a house. No summer light, just winter light. Natural heat and light through winter. Um, and just by principles of window placement, uh, size of windows, thermal mass to hold the heat, all these simple principles are uh, easy to find out about and you can build houses to be energy efficient. Not everybody wants a composting toilet, of course, but uh, you can have, and there are lots of things about this, you can have uh, composting toilets if you want to go in that path, you don't have to, but the reality is there are things out there where you can take responsibility. I would think most people don't want to take responsibility for their own waste, and they have to see flush away. But ultimately, um, you know, you need to be responsible if you're thinking about being sustainable. It's not only just um, growing your own food, it's also dealing with other things. And putting in these kind of things, also grey water recycling, work kind of stuff helps to conserve resources and so forth.